Does anybody know what they call a failed entrepreneur in Silicon Valley? Experienced. It's a huge idea for where you're going outside of this area. In most parts of the United States, let alone the world, do you know what they call the failed entrepreneur? A failure. Okay? And in, and in other places in the world, they not only call you a failure, it's shame on your family, you know, your village, your culture. You have to leave, and you never get another chance. So understand that everything I've been talking about is not in a risk-averse culture, it's been in a culture that celebrates risk. Silicon Valley is an innovation center because of lots of things, but most importantly, because it does not kill failure. It celebrates it. Does this make sense? It is a big idea. So you'll take all of these great lectures, and gee, Steve said X and Y, and then like you'll hit a brick wall wherever you're going. First thing, whatever I would do, because I just came back from Chile, which you, the government has said, we're doing innovation and entrepreneurship. Government mandate. And of course you find out that, gee, if you have a failed company, there is no bankruptcy courts, um, and, or even commercial courts. It takes you seven years to unwind the company. Whoa. And you fail? Man, people point at you in the street. You know? So, like, who wants to do startups in that culture? You really got to be insane. So, it doesn't mean there isn't any, but the first thing I would do in any country is put your ear to your ground and my finger in the air and understand what the local culture is about failure. Because startups are about taking risk. Does this make, make sense at all? Uh, which is why people come to Silicon Valley. You think it's the technology and the weather, yes, yes, and the money and the venture capital, all yes. But, it's a, but it's, it, this is why there's a book that you should all read if you're going overseas. Um, I'm just adding your reading list. It's called Regional Advantage. And it's by a professor called Annalise Saxinian. And she described why Silicon Valley beat Boston uh, for the title of the Innovation Center in the United States. And by the way, when I came out to Silicon Valley, I think when you were here, it wasn't clear whether Route 128 in Boston was going to dominate or whether Silicon Valley was going to dominate. And she goes through the reasons why Silicon Valley won. And the one that kept hitting home for me was the one as follows. In Boston, when you started a company, you were living within driving distance of your family and extended family. And the culture on the east coast of the United States is you worked for a company for life. And when you did something abnormal, like you quit Digital Equipment Corporation and you're going to, who, is, who are these new people? Do I know their mothers? You know, who are they? You know, like, wait a minute, they come from a good family? Mom, I don't know. You just, all of a sudden, you had this enormous cultural weight to stay to the norm, even in technology businesses. All of a sudden, in Silicon Valley, you could get on an airplane, tear up your, you know, your name, your passport, and your history, and reinvent yourself here. And no one back home would ever know what you're doing. And that actually mattered for a lot here. So I just want to, for those of you going overseas, want to tell you this is all great theory, but understand it's culturally determined by a lot of what's going on here. And, and you know, for those of you who come from these cultures, duh, you know, but for those of you who like grown up in the Silicon Valley culture, it is not the norm. It is an aberration even in the United States.